up your name you are high and lifted up you are great and greatly to be praised oh I believe that you are here to heal the broken heart oh, we worship you we worship
to Here I am Down on my knees Again Surrendering all Surrendering all And finally here Lord as you draw me near I'm desperate for you God I'm desperate for you And I surrender And I surrender And I want to know you more I want to know you more I surrender Come on all over this room I surrender I want to know you more I want to know you more Say drench Mercy and grace Hunger and hunger Is anybody thirsty today? Come on, tell them I'm hungry Hunger and With arms stretch wide I know you, I know you hear my Speak to me, speak to me now. Father, we need a word from you. Speak to me. Now. Come on, from your heart to his heart, cry out, say, God, I surrender. I surrender.
we surrender all in your presence. One more time. Like a mighty storm, stir within my soul. Lord, have your way. You can tear down everything that's not like you. You can burn away everything that's not like you today. Come on, like a rushing wind. Like a rushing wind. I need you. Jesus, breathe. I need some serious worshipers. Talk to them. Lord, have your way. Have your Like a rushing wind, you can blow us, you can blow us down the day older. Have your way, have your way in me. Have your way, have your way. You can do it in me. I give you permission. 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 You can do it in me. My hallelujah belongs to you.
Give them your best praise. Give them your best shout. Give them your best worship. Don't bring 2016 praise in the 2017. Give them something new. He requires more of you. Now he needs more of you, more than what you did last year. He needs something new in this new season. Come on, give it to him, church. Give it to him, church. Hallelujah. 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 Bless the name of the Lord. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to God. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Uh, whom shall I fear? Of whom shall I be afraid? Uh, tell everybody, you know, I'm going to trust in Jesus. I'm going to trust in Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory, glory. We came to bless the name of Jesus. We came to lift your name high because you are great and greatly to be praised. Glory. Did you come to sing tonight? I said, did you come to sing tonight? Come on, then let's worship right here. Everybody, the Lord is my light. 
Whom shall I fear? Yes, God. Come on, you say, the Lord is my light. Whom shall I fear? Yes, God. Come on, say that again. Say, the Lord is my light. I hear your worshipers. Whom shall I fear? Say, the Lord is my light. Hallelujah. I will wait on you, Jesus. I hear you, church. I hear you, church. Say, I will trust in you. That's it. Lift it up. Lift it up. I will trust in you, God. Come on. Let's take it back to the top. Everybody, come on. The Lord is my life. The Lord. Put it in part, y'all. Whom shall I? Yes, God. Everybody say the Lord. Come on, sing it for yourself. Who shall I fear? One more time, one more time. Sing it again. The Lord is my life. Who shall I fear? This time testify to somebody. Tell them. Say the Lord is my life. Hallelujah. Who shall I fear? Hallelujah. Now this is what we say. I will wait on you, Jesus. Father, we will wait on you. I will wait on you. Lift it up. Say, I will trust in you. I hear you. Let them know it. Let them know it. Say, I will trust in you. Let's take it out right here, y'all. I will remain. Say, I I love that part. Everybody say, I will remain. Yes, I will. Let's take it out right here. Come on. Hallelujah. Now, if you trust, come on, put your hands on it like this. Come on. All over the house, all over the house. God, we bless your name. God, we honor you. Come on, y'all say, we said, we said. That's it, church. Come on. Do you want the Yes, God. Everybody listen up. Do you want the We said I hope for you. For you. We said I hope for your love. We said I hope on no one who is the everlasting Hallelujah. He is the everlasting God. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hey, come on, say it again, y'all. Do you want we said our hope. We said our hope on you. We said our hope on your love. We said our hope on you. Yes, God. Who is the everlasting God? He is the everlasting God. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. Come on, sing it again. We said our hope on you. Yes, it is, Jesus. All my hope and my trust is on you. Is in Jesus, He's never let me down. He's never lost a case. He's on my side. He's on my side. He's on my side. One more time, we set our hope. Yes, Jesus. Yes, we do. Let me hear you say it. Say, I will remain confident. Cut that track right there. You lift it up again. Say, I will. 
with our hands it's in to say confident one more time sing it till your spirit gets it I will remain say, confident that I will see the goodness of the Lord I can't die until I see it Jesus I used to be so broken, lost, empty, a heart with no beat, a singer with no song to sing, so I know the feeling, the silence is deafening, but in your pain lies a place. Sweet and sour victory. So keep walking, 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 though it seems so far. No matter who you are, see there's one thing that I know. When my feet can leave you so bitter. Your heart's bleeding. But what are you gonna do now? I think it's time you break free. And you better keep walking, walking, walking. Though it seems so far. Oh, no, it doesn't really matter who you are. See, that's one thing. So bitter, 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 bitter You must believe And it's better, 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 better It's alright, try your eyes, send a prayer To the sky I know, it's hard to find But you must believe That it gets better Almost out of here. See, I was almost done. I wanted to die from how I was done wrong. I cried out every night looking for a helping hand. But that's when it happened. Jesus took me and he held me close, gave me love, refilled my heart, helped me grow. I'm better because God made me hold him available anytime. Try him out, he'll change your life. See, because I know that if I try to leave, you will bitter, bitter, bitter. Oh, but you must believe Jesus will make it better. Jesus will make it better. Oh, I try to leave. You so bitter, bitter, bitter. Ah, yeah. God will make you believe it will get better, better, oh, better. God will make it better. God will make it better. Jesus will make it better. Jesus will make it better. Jesus will make it better. Oh, yeah. Jesus, Jesus, 
Jesus, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus,
Jesus. And I can tell there's some people in here that loves to call his name as well. Jesus. Something happens when you call that name. Things begin to change when you call that name. Demons tremble at the name Jesus. And sickness has to flee at the name Jesus. 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 She is like a can of Pringles once you pop. You just can't stop. I can't stop calling this name. Oh my God. Jesus. Say it again. 
Holy Spirit, you are welcome here. Come flood this place and fill the atmosphere. Your glory, God, is what our hearts long for, to be Sing it, church. Holy Spirit. And Holy Spirit, you can flood this place.
lift our hands. Come on. Just begin to lift up a sound of worship. Oh, Jesus. Son of David, have mercy on me. Have mercy on me. Oh. Let us become more aware of your presence. Let us experience the glory of your goodness. Let us become more aware of your presence. Let us experience the glory. Oh, we've come to meet with you. We've come to lift up your name. You are high and lifted up. You are great and greatly to be praised. Oh, I believe that you are here to heal the broken heart. Oh, da We worship you. We worship Desperate for you, and I surrender, and I surrender, and I want to know you more. I want to know you more. I surrender. Come on, all over this room. I surrender. I want to know you more. I want to know you more. Say, drench. Drench my soul. Mercy. Mercy and grace. Hunger and hunger. Is anybody thirsty today? Come on, tell them I'm hungry. I'm hungry. With arms stretched wide. Arms stretched wide. 
Satisfied with yesterday's manna, 
Like a rushing wind, you can blow us, you can blow us down the day older. Have your way, have your way in me. Have your way, have your way. You can do it in me. I give you permission. 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 You can do it in me. My hallelujah belongs to you. You deserve it. 
Try to take his praise away from him. Say, my hallelujah. Yes, it belongs. When the world try to get your praise, God, I'll tell you that my yes. Come on, somebody needs to really give it to him this morning. Sing it one more time. My hallelujah. Right there where you stand, go ahead and give it to him. Come on, give him your best praise. Give him your best shout. Give him your best worship. Don't bring 2016 praise into 2017. Give him something new. He requires more of you. Now he needs more of you, more than what you did last year. He needs something new in this new season. Come on, give it to him, church. Give it to him, church. Hallelujah. 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 Bless the name of the Lord. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to God. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Uh, whom shall I fear? Of whom shall I be afraid? Uh, tell everybody, you know, I'm going to trust in Jesus. I'm going to trust in Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory, glory. We came to bless the name of Jesus. We came to lift your name high because you are great uh, and greatly to be praised. Uh, glory. Did you come to sing tonight? I said, did you come to sing tonight? Come on, then, let's worship right here. Everybody, the Lord is my light. Who shall I fear? Yes, God. Come on, you say, the Lord is my light. Who shall I fear? Yes, God. Come on, say that again. Say, the Lord is my light. I hear your worshipers. Whom shall I fear? Say the Lord is my light. Thank you, God. I will wait on you. Hallelujah. I will wait on you, Jesus. I hear you, church. I hear you, church. Say, I will trust in you. That's it. Lift it up. Lift it up. I will trust in you, God. Come on. Let's take it back to the top. Everybody, come on. The Lord is my life. The Lord. Put it in part, y'all. Whom shall I? Yes, God. 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 Yes, God
Yes, God. Everybody say the Lord. Come on, sing it for yourself. Who shall I fear? One more time, one more time. Sing it again. The Lord is my life. Who shall I fear? This time testify to somebody. Tell them. Say the Lord is my life. Hallelujah. Whom shall I fear? Hallelujah. Now this is what we say. I will wait on you, Jesus. Father, we will wait on you. Listen up. Say, I will trust in you. I hear you. Let them know it. Let them know it. Say, I will trust in you. Let's take it out right here, y'all. I will remain, say, uh, confident in this, I will see I love that part. Everybody say, I will remain. Yes, I will. Let's take it out right here. Come on. Hallelujah. Now, if you trust, come on, put your hands on it like this. Come on. All over the house, all over the house. God, we bless your name. God, we honor you. Come on, y'all say. We said, we said. That's it, church. Come on. You are Yes, God. Everybody listen up. You are we said I hope for you. For you, we said I hope for your love. We said I hope on no one who is the everlasting Hallelujah. He is the everlasting God. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hey, come on, say it again, y'all. You we said I hope. Let me tell you, he's never lost a case. He's on my side. He's on my side. He's on my side. One more time. We set our hope. Yes, Jesus. We set our hope on your love. Yes, we do. Let me hear you say it. Say, I will remain confident. Cut that track right there. You lift it up again. Say, I With our hands, it's in to say, confident. One more time. Sing it till your spirit gets it. I will remain say, confident that I will see the goodness of the Lord. I can't die until I see it. Jesus. I used to be so broken, lost, empty, a heart with no beat, a singer with no song to sing, so I know the feeling, the silence is deafening, but in your pain lies a 
Jesus. I love to call the name Jesus. And I can tell there's some people in here that loves to call his name as well. Jesus. Something happens when you call that name. Things begin to change when you call that name. Demons tremble at the name Jesus. And sickness has to flee at the name Jesus. 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 She is like a can of Pringles once you pop. You just can't stop. I can't stop calling this name. Oh my God. Jesus. I'm going to request us to stand up for the opening prayer. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for the opportunity to come before you again. We thank you for the life of our dear sister, Sandra Luanga. Heavenly Father, we come with heavy hearts today. But at the same time, we are thankful for the few years, few span of years that you gave us to us with Sister Sandra. We ask of you today that as we stand in your presence to dedicate her soul to you, you remember those of us who have remained behind. I pray for comfort for everybody who is distraught. I pray for strength for everybody who is weak today. I pray for encouragement to everybody who has been grieved today. Lord, may you strengthen us as we go through this difficult moment. May your presence be real and may your glory be manifest in our midst today. We thank you, Father. We bless you. In Jesus' name we pray. And everybody said, Amen. Hallelujah. We, uh, my name is Pastor Thomas Mutete. I... Uh, I'm the senior pastor of Bushenyi Miracle Center in Western Uganda. But the lockdown locked me down in Kampala, so I'm grateful that God has given me a chance to meet all of you today. But also, uh, Sister Sandra was personally known to me uh, through Brother Ivan Nkunda. I feel as broken and as grieved, probably as any of us today, that we have lost such a wonderful, wonderful person. Uh, she is definitely going to be irreplaceable. And so, at the same time as we are grieving, the Bible says, I do not want you to be ignorant for those who have fallen asleep. That when we cry, we need to cry with hope. That's what the Bible says. That much as we have lost a wonderful, wonderful, irreplaceable person, may the Lord give us some hope. Some hope that someday we will find her. Some hope that... He will strengthen us and sustain us in this difficult moment. Some hope that whatever looks like a mountain in front of us, God will find a way of comforting us. And so that's my prayer today, that God will give us hope in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated. We're going to go through our, we're going to go through our order of service. Wednesday, 23rd of June, 2021, a difficult day. 
Okay. And uh, some announcements. Sorry for that uh, interruption. But uh, I just want to make uh, well, to welcome you to our home in Busika. It's, uh, I know it's a sad time for all of us. We're all grieving. But this is a time we need to get closer to God so that he can comfort us and strengthen us as we go through this very difficult time. This function, we need to strictly follow the standard operating procedures. So we've provided sanitizer right there. We have, in case you feel you're getting thirsty, we have some bottles of water. You just have to walk over and pick a bottle of water if you feel thirsty. And we have two restrooms inside the house. One, when you go through the entrance, one is on the extreme left. The other one is straight up on the steps. Then you can, you go straight and you'll be able to see it. Although we're running very late, so I don't want to waste any more time, but I want to once again try to go through quickly through what our program is going to be like. We've gone through the arrival of friends and guests, or family and friends. Shortly after, the service is going to begin shortly. We shall have a few tributes after the service. Then we shall go through the process of laying wreaths. Now, this is going to be done twice. We shall lay wreaths on Sandra's uh, photo. Then we shall have another laying of wreaths, wreaths at, at down at the grave. But this will only be, uh, uh, I mean, it's only people who feel they really want to go down there who, sh who will be able to go through that function. Then after that, uh, after that, we shall go down and complete the function of the grave and then everybody will be depart at leisure. Remember, we have to go through this function quickly because we have a curfew beginning at seven. So with these very few words, I now hand over to Pastor to take us through the service. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, my dear brother. On such an occasion, it's very difficult to know where to start, but thankfully we have an order of service and uh, we're, trying to, we're going to try and follow everything that is in the order of service. And we thank God that for the people who have worked hard behind the scenes to get us where we are. God bless you so much. Some of us got lost on the way when we were coming, but we thank God we are finally here. I want to personally pass on my condolences to Mama and the entire family of uh, Sister Sandra Ranga for this difficult time. Just know we are standing with you in prayer. We are asking the Lord to strengthen you. The Bible says, may he strengthen the feeble knees and strengthen the hands that are hanging low. We are praying that the Lord will strengthen you in this difficult time. Um, according to what's in front of me, I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. Henceforth, there is laid up for me the crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will award to me on that day. And not only to me, but also to all who have loved his appearing. Do your best to come to me soon. That could be the words of 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 7 to 8. But maybe that is what Sandra is saying. She has fought the, the rest. It's us who are left to keep on fighting. 
Sandra was born on the 17th of August, 1975, and uh, she unfortunately passed on from us on the 21st of June, 2021, a very difficult day also. Uh, she was married to David Semambia Mpanga on the 30th of August, 2008. Children, Kyla, I don't know whether Kyla is here. Um, I, I stand with you, Kyla. And then Kyla Mpanga, and then Josiah. Josiah Mpanga, I stand with you. May the Lord strengthen both of you in this difficult time. Education, she went to preparatory school in St. Andrew's School, Turi. All levels in Gaiaza High School and A levels at King's College, Budo. She did her university degree in Makere University. Professional life, she worked for United Nations, Kosovo, Afghanistan, Nepal, and Liberia for United Nations. Beautiful pictures of her in different settings in this place. If you have the order of service in front of you, we're going to sing a song. Feel free to stand or to sit. Uh, if you're able to stand, that's wonderful. If you're not able to stand, uh, this is not a force. Please just feel free. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. There's a song which says, the steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His mercies never come to an end. If you know, how, if you know the, the, the lyrics, please join me as we sing it. The steadfast love Oh, the Lord never ceases. His mercies never will come to an end. They are new every morning, new every morning. Great is your faithfulness, O oh Lord. Great is thy faithfulness. We shall sing it through again. The steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His mercies never will come to an end. They are new every morning, new every morning. Great is thy faithfulness, O Lord. Great is thy faithfulness. Hallelujah. We meet here in the name of Jesus Christ, who died and was raised the glory of God the Father. Grace and mercy be with you. I now go ahead to introduce the service. We have come here today to remember before God our sister Sandra to give thanks for her life, to commend her to God, our merciful Redeemer and Judge, to commit her body to be buried and to comfort one another in our grief. Almighty God, you judge us with infinite mercy and justice and love everything you have made. In your mercy, turn the darkness of death into the dawn of a new life and the sorrow of parting into the joy of heaven through our Savior, Jesus Christ. And everybody said, Amen. There's a hymn here. We're going to sing a hymn. Say, Jesus' name above all names. If you know the song, please join me. If you know the hymn, please join me. Jesus, name above all names, beautiful Savior, glorious Lord, Emmanuel, God is with us. Blessed Redeemer, living word, Jesus, name above all names, beautiful Savior, glorious Lord, 
Emmanuel, God is with us, blessed Redeemer, living world. Emmanuel, God is with us, blessed Redeemer. Living word. Heavenly Father, we thank you for that wonderful song. That song is personally, I love it very much because I used to sing it when I lost my, my elder brother who was paying my school fees. And I used to sing it when I was in high school, 1991. So thank you for inserting it into this, into this, uh, uh, this one of this, this this order of service. As children of a loving heavenly Father, let us ask His forgiveness, for He is gentle and full of compassion. God of mercy, we acknowledge that we are sinners. You're going to repeat this after me, please. Um, if you don't have a book, just repeat it after me. Let's all say it together. God of mercy, we acknowledge that we are all sinners. We turn from the wrong that we have thought and said and done and are mindful of all that we have failed to do. For the sake of Jesus, who died for us, forgive us for all this past and help us to live each day in the light of Jesus Christ our Lord. And all of us said, Amen. Hallelujah. Let's all be silent in the presence of Almighty God. Merciful Father, hear our prayers and comfort us. Renew our trust in your Son, whom you raised from the dead. Strengthen our faith, O oh God, that all who have died in the love of Christ will share in his resurrection, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forevermore. And all of us said, Amen. We're going to take our first reading. Please be seated. We're going to take our first reading by Kyla Mpanga. Today's reading comes from Psalms 23. The Lord is my shepherd, therefore can I lack nothing. He makes me lie down in green pastures and leaves me beside still waters. He shall refresh my soul and guide me in the path of righteousness, for his name's sake. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me, your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You spread a table before me in the presence of those who trouble me. You have anointed my head with oil and my cup shall be full. Surely goodness and loving mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. That marks the end of the reading. Then shall we say in response to these things, if God is for us, who can go against us? A reading from Romans chapter 8, verse 31 to 39. He who did not spare his own son, but gave him up for us all, 
how will he not also, along with him, graciously give us all things? Who will bring any charge against those whom God has chosen? It is God who justifies. Who then is the one who condemns? No one. Christ Jesus, who died more than that, who was raised to life, is at the right hand of God and is also interceding for us. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Or, or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or danger, or sword? Smoothly, for your sake we face death only the Lord. We are considered as fit to be plotted. No. In all these things we are more than empire, even who loved it. For I am convinced that neither death, nor life, neither angels, nor demons, neither the present, nor the future, nor any powers, neither height or no depth, no anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. There ends the second reading. Reflect your truth. We give you thanks for Sandra for the grace and mercy she received from you, for all that was good in her life, for the memories we treasure today. Especially we thank you, Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. It's not within our order of service for us to share from the Word of God. And if you have a Bible, kindly turn with me to the book of First Thessalonians. The book of Thessalonians chapter 4 and verse 13. It's a scripture that talks about hope. It's a scripture that talks about hope. To sorrow in hope. Reverend Ivan, are you there? It is First Thessalonians chapter 4 and verse 13. Have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning that you sorrow not even the reading the Bible? He is looking after our affairs, he's taking care of us. He knows that we need to feed on a daily basis, we need somebody to, to find the pastors for us, and it makes it very clear that the Lord actually is our shepherd. Hallelujah. And our second reading says, What shall we say to these reasons to these things? If God be for us, this is Romans. If God be for us, who will be against us? Is it coronavirus? It's it uh, whatever. If God be for us, we can go through anything. Hallelujah. And so the Bible says that the most powerful ingredient in handling the crisis that involves grief and loss and sorrow. Is called knowledge or do not be ignorant. We need to remember that the Lord is our shepherd. We need to remember that the Lord is, is, is on our side. 
We have he, he has not turned against us because we lost Sandra. God does not hate us now because we lost Sandra. Because Kyla lost the man. Oh. It's somebody who takes people. care of our Someone fears. Somebody. somebody who cares that we've eaten. Somebody who cares that we've taken, we have shelter and we have pasture and we have where to live. The Bible says in the in, in the in the in the in the scripture that, that the little girl read, it says, He makes me to lie down in green pastures and leads me beside still waters. He shall refresh my soul and guide me in the path of righteousness. Even if I go through the valley of the shadow of death I'll fear no evil. So what should what what should we know in the time of sorrow? What should we remember when we are grieving? What should come to mind when we have lost somebody we love? It's one thing the Bible said do not be ignorant. Remember God lo still loves you. Remember he's still the Lord. He's still the master of the universe. He is the master of our salvation. He is able to above the above. But God is real too. Look at some No, the pain cannot be ignored. Because we lost has not said that. It's gonna grow up the next vice president of Uganda or the next president of Uganda. It's still what things of our life are coming behind us. What's the best things of our life are coming ahead? There is still hope that you walk out of here and this corona issues will come to an end. And so I came to encourage you, my mission to you today, if I can say nothing else, I'll tell you there is still hope. Hallelujah. There is still hope that the God who began the good work in your life, he has got power, strength, and ability to finish what he started. Hallelujah. It's very, very difficult for us to come to terms. I always ask my questions. I always ask God questions. You see, faith does not mean we abandon our intellect. Just because we believe doesn't mean we abandon reason. So sometimes, while I'm believing, I ask God some questions. I say, oh God, why would you take away a mother when the kids are still so young? That's the question sometimes I ask. Why did my father die when I was only seven years old? Why? As so many people dying, America has lost over 600,000 people through coronavirus. China, maybe over 122,000. Why are so many people dying in such a short? In the last three weeks alone, in the last three weeks alone, uh, since the month of, of June started, dude, this, is a, this is a terrible month. I don't, know, I don't know for you, but it's been a terrible month for me. We've lost so many lawyers. We've lost so many doctors. So many wonderful people. Why? Why should God decide to take away people whom we have hope in, whom we have faith in? It's a question. It's a question. It's a, it's a, it's a question of reason. Listen to what the, what the Bible says. The Bible says faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. So what is God saying when I'm in pain? What is God saying when I'm crying, when tears are wetting my shirt or my, 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 my dress? What is God saying? God is saying that if you're grieving, just remember, do not grieve in hope that those who are dead are not dead. They are sleeping. Hallelujah. They are sleeping. If they died in Christ, they are only asleep. Death has got no sting when Christ, when Christ is in the center. Death has got no pain if Jesus 
is the author of life, the author and the finish of our faith. Death has got no pain if he is the resurrection and the life. So if you know, if you know Jesus is the resurrection and the life, then death will lose its sting. I'm praying for each and every single one of us today that you draw closer to Jesus. Make him your personal savior. And once he's close to you, death will lose the power to grieve you. It will lose the power to remove your hope. Because when Jesus is at the center, the Bible says, Christ in you is the hope of glory. I know we're grieving, but this is what if I was in church, I would say, turn to your neighbor and say, Christ in you is the hope of glory. If you can cry, if you can laugh, then you can talk and say, Christ in me is the hope of glory. So if there is no hope to look up to, if, there is, if everything I hoped for has been destroyed, I still have one hope. Christ in me is the hope of glory. If everything else goes away, at least I can hold on to Jesus. He is the anchor that holds. Hallelujah. There is a man who wrote a book. Uh, he's a French poet. He's a French poet. And he wrote a statement. He says, man is a sojourner, which means we're just going through this journey on mother planet Earth. He is a speck in a continuum. Those of you who did chemistry at a level like Dr. Diana, you know what a continuum is, physical chemistry. A speck in a continuum. The, that person has been immortalized by the mystic death, which means death does not destroy you, it immortalizes you through virtuous living. Man, a sojourner on mother planet Earth, a speck in a continuum, immortalized by the mystic death through virtuous living. So on a day like this, when we are all crying and all grieving and worried about what will happen to the children, what will happen to the, to the, to the, to, to, to the family, I want you to remember, Sandra has been immortalized. She's pitying us. Hallelujah. Especially, I know that Sandra used to go to worship Harvest Church until she met my brother. My brother, uh, in 2008, my brother David. But the issue is this. If you receive Christ as your personal savior, death does not destroy you. Death immortalizes you. It makes you someone who will live forever. Hallelujah. Um, there's a story I want to, st to share with you as I close uh, this message, uh, which, uh, which is already becoming too long. Hallelujah. As I close, I want, I want to share with you this story. There's a story of two babies that had not yet been born. Maybe you've come across it. These two babies have not yet been born. They're twins in their mother's womb. You've heard a story, you just joined me in, in, in celebrating. But this is a story of two twins who have not yet been born. And they're having a conversation between themselves. And one twin turned to the other twin and say, is there life after birth? And the other one said, oh, it is all dark. Nobody has ever been there before. And nobody knows what happens there. So the other twins say, have you ever heard about something they call mother? I hear, I hear stories of somebody called mother. And say, who is mother? The other one say, who is mother? Is it, a, 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 is it, is it some of this juice we are drinking in the, in, the, in the womb? Or what is mother? And say, I hear that in him, in how we live and we move and we have our being, and I said, how, how do you say that we live and move and have our being in mother? Is that conceivable? Is that possible that you can, you can live in someone else? 
And then the other twin say, yeah, I hear there's somebody called mother. We always hear the, something like a heartbeat above us. Like, and, I, and I hear that whenever that heartbeat is beating, that means we are, we are feeding. Say, are you sure? Say, yeah. I'm sure that whenever the heart is beating, then we are feeding. But we have, how can you say there is mother when you have never seen him? When you have never seen her? How can you say there is mother when you have never seen mother? And say, all you need to do is believe, have faith, that there is a person called mother and there's life after birth. So today I'm asking the reasonable members of this congregation who have questioned whether there is God. I say there is God. The Bible says in him we live and move and have our being. Somebody say, but how can you say there's life after death? Have you ever died and come back? It doesn't matter whether you believe or you don't believe. There's life after death. And there is evidence in, three, in six or six books of the Bible that Jesus Christ is a resurrection and the life. So death is not the end if Jesus is at the center of the picture. Hallelujah. And so today, as we close this, I want to remind you that when we grieve like we are grieving today, when we are in pain like we are pray, like in pain today, do not abandon the fact that Jesus is the author and the finisher of our faith, that in Christ we live and move and have our being, and there is life after death. And if there is life after death, then in my pain I have hope. Hallelujah. In my sorrow, I have hope. In my grief, I have hope. Mommy, I want to say to you today, in your sorrow, remember there is hope. Christ in you is the hope of glory. And if you're here today and you have not given your life to Christ, or it doesn't make sense, or it's not reasonable for you to give your life to Christ, today I came to remind you that Jesus can make a difference on a day like this. He can remove the sting out of death and bring life where death is hallelujah praise the name of the lord and so if you want to give your life to christ this is a good time to give your life to jesus let's continue that's the end of my my message you promise eternal life to those who believe remember for good this your servant sandra as we also remember her bring all who rest in christ into the fullness of your kingdom where sins have been forgiven and death is no more. Lord, in your mercy, everybody said, hear our prayer. Your mighty power brings joy out of grief and life out of death. Look in mercy on Sandra and all who mourn. Give them patient faith, patient faith in times of darkness. Strengthen them with the knowledge of your love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. You are tender towards your children, and your mercy is all over all your works. Heal the memories of heart and failure. Give us the wisdom and the grace to use aright the time that is left to us here on the earth, to turn to Christ and follow in his steps in the way that leads to everlasting life. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We're going to all repeat this. If you have a book in front of you, God of mercy, God of mercy, entrusting into your hands all that you have made and rejoicing in our communion with all your faithful people, we make our prayers through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. As our Savior taught us to, so we pray. Can we go together? Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, for thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.
There is power in the name of Jesus. Does anybody know this song? We can sing it together. If you know this song, please join me to lead us in this song so we can sing it together. Hallelujah. There is power. Is that the song? <laughs> power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus. To break every chain, break every chain. Break every chain, to break every chain, to break every chain, to break every chain. See? Go ahead and help me, please. Go ahead. Rising up. There's an army rising up. To break every chain, break every chain, break every chain. To break every chain, to break every chain, to break every chain. Hallelujah, praise the name of the Lord. Let me just share this as we're singing that song. That there are chains of bondage that hold people in fear. There are chains of bondage people in apprehension they don't know what is coming uncertainty they are chains today i'm praying that as we sing this song one more time every chain will break hallelujah can we go there is power in the name of jesus there is power in the name of jesus there is power in the name of jesus to break every chain, 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 to break every chain. There's an army rising up. There's an army rising up. There's an army rising up to break every chain, 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 to break every chain. I'm praying today, may the Lord break every chain. May every chain of fear, may every chain of bondage, may every chain that clouds this place be broken in the name of Jesus. I ask the Lord on behalf of every mourner today, may the Lord break every chain, every chain of bondage to ancestral spirits, every chain of whatever accusations they do when people die, people say that somebody has killed them. Today we break every chain, everything that the enemy has crowded and gathered to frustrate and discourage and, and disorganize people. We ask of you, Jehovah God, you break every chain. Break every chain in the name of Jesus. We ask as mourners on this day, Lord, you can see our pain. You can see our grief. You can see what mommy is going through. You can see what the children are going through. You can see what every one of us is going through. Lord, break every chain break every chain whether it is psychological whether it is emotional whether it is physical whether it is spiritual whatever chain there is lord we ask of you today break every chain in jesus mighty name and everybody said amen hallelujah hallelujah uh commendation and farewell Let us commend Sandra to the mercy of God. Uh, thank you so much for joining me in that prayer.
Let us come and stand to the mercy of the Lord, our maker. Uh, in the teaching of the church, each and every single one, one of us needs a relationship with God. Jesus is not a religion. Jesus is a person. He seeks a personal relationship with you. So whether you are at the church, thank God, President number seven said, God is everywhere. So you have the privilege of developing and cultivating a personal relationship with God while you're still alive. The Bible says it's appointed for men once to die after that judgment. And so today we commend the life of Sandra to the mercy of God, our maker and redeemer. God, our creator and redeemer, by your power, Christ conquered death and entered into glory. Confident of his victory and claiming his promises, we entrust Sandra to your mercy in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, who died and is alive and reigns with you now and forevermore. And all of us said, Amen. The committal. The Lord is full of compassion and mercy, slow to anger and of great goodness. As a father is tender towards his children, so is the Lord tender to those who fear him. For he knows of what we are made. He remembers we are but dust. Our days are like the grass. We flourish like a flower of the field. When the wind goes over it, it is gone. And its place will know it no more. But the merciful goodness of the Lord endures forever and ever toward those that fear him and his righteousness upon their children's children. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Uh, if you have a song that we can all sing together, not necessarily what we have in the book, if you have a song that everyone can sing together, please give it to us as we escort our sister uh, to the final resting place. Please um, feel free, feel free to share a song that you want, you, like maybe mom has a suggestion, someone, you, you, you want us to just sing, the song you'd sing for her, like the lullaby you'd sing for a baby going to sleep, something from her heart, not necessarily from the book, but we, you can choose a song that we can sing together. And then as we sing this song, we share memories of what she has been to us. And, and I remember, I remember I first saw Sa Sandra in Kabalagala. Ivan, do you remember Kabalagala? Where there was a little shop uh, and you were working in that shop. Is it an MTN shop? That's a long time ago long, long time ago, and um, that's my memory, that's all I remember. But some of us have got rich memories of when she was changing diapers, like mommy, of when she was going to school on the first day, of when she was coming home and said, God, mommy, I got a job with United Nations, or I just come back from Liberia. You have those memories. So we are going to compound those memories and we're going to sing a song that makes sense to all of us. Doctor, please help us if you can. Or someone, someone who can lead us in one song. I know we are all grieving. This is a funeral service. Please, go ahead. Thank you. Attendeth my Yes, yes, wonderful. Mm -hmm. Let these 
blessed assurance control. Christ, yes, he has. God, helpless still. Let us pray. Now, Lord, let your servant go in peace. Your word has been fulfilled. My own eyes have seen the salvation which you have prepared in the sight of every people. A light to reveal you to the nations and the glory of your people, Israel. Glory to the Father, to the Son, to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be forever. Amen. Prayer. We shall all say this prayer together. God be in my head and in my understanding. God be in my eyes and in my looking. God be in my mouth and in my speaking. God be in my heart and in my thinking. God be at my end, at, at my departing. Amen. Support us, O Lord, all the day long of this troublous light. Until the shadows lengthen and the evening comes, the fever of life is over. The, the busy world is hushed and the fever of life is over and our work is done. Then, Lord, in your mercy, grant us a safe lodging, a holy rest and peace at the last. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, and all of us said, Amen. And as we close, as we end, may God in his infinite mercy, love, Bring the whole church, living and departed in the Lord Jesus, to a joyful resurrection. And the fulfillment of his eternal kingdom. Amen. May God give you his comfort and his peace, his light and his joy in this world and the world to come. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. In Jesus' mighty name we prayed. And all of us said, Amen. Amen. We have got some tributes. We've got some tributes. Barbara Angopa. Please, kindly, on behalf of Sandra's friends, I'm going to invite Sister. Okay, please go ahead. service. I'm in the service. A very strong and good message is given us. We continue to celebrate uh, 
Sandra's life. But as Pastor said, when such things happen, we need to get closer to God. Because it's only God who can answer us. Now, on the program, we're supposed to have tributes. Tributes. But uh, before that happens, uh, we want to lay with on Sandra's photo. Remember, this function, we have to abide by standard operating procedures. So, we shall go as follows. I'll read out the name and I'll kindly request you to step forward. You carry your wrist and put on Sandra's photo. Then I'll request you to sanitize after that. Then you go back to sit. We shall go through this. Earlier on, I had mentioned that we're going to do this twice. Because when we go to the final resting place, for those who want to go, you get an opportunity to put your wrist on Sandra's grave. So I'll proceed quickly to request David to come, step forward, and lay your wrist. Of live for this panga walk. So we shall request Flavia to, to lay her wrist. Yeah. Next, we can have Mr. Amos Jose if he has a 
Let you come, Bowser. Next, this is Alice Karugaba. And Juliana. Next, Mrs. Vyaruhanga. Mrs. Vyaruhanga and family. Next, Mr. Nkunda and family. Next cut. We can go to and family. It's only this one left. This one, the only one left. Yeah. I've got a bunch. already finished. So before the Ampangas Lake and the Mukasas Lake first.
Let's find now next on the program we have tributes. These are speeches. The first speech we're going to have will be delivered by Diana Nkunda on behalf of Sandra's friends. Diana Nkunda, can you please step forward? Is it clear? clear. Yeah. My name is Diana Nkunda. I'm reading a speech or words of tribute on behalf of Sandra's friends that was written by Barbara. One of my favorite childhood photos features an eight-year-old Sandra holding court at our dining table with our families that lived in the UK. She's just bitten into a piece of cheese toast and she's continuing with the story. She's already the hot girl and all the children around the table have their eyes fixed on her. Sandra was so beautiful, inside and out, yet she wore it without arrogance and so much charm. We were childhood friends, but became sisters and partners in naughtiness when I returned to Uganda. I was lonely when I got back, but Sandra soon showed me the ropes in Kampala and how everything worked. Fun feel, fun loving and funny and warm, and how we laughed. Yet she would tell you hard truths when you needed to hear them. Sandra was immensely talented, a natural born leader. She could manage her business with so much ease on the phone, in the cafe, at the hairdressers, and get things done. She had a gentle exterior, but was also very assertive when she needed to be. I do not know if she realized how smart she was. There was almost nothing that she could not do if she set her heart on it. She was even an excellent matchmaker. She introduced me to my husband. Without my dear Sandra, I would not have my daughter. But it wasn't just old friends who extended her warmth. She has a unique ability to make everyone from all walks of life special and seen. Yet I know Sandra almost went through dark times, also went through dark times, but she carried disappointments with so much grace. I feel honored to have been Sandra's friend and to have had her in my life. Her light shone so bright, but it burnt out far too soon. Sincere condolences to all Sandra's family and friends, especially Kayla and Josie who have lost their mother so young. There are certain people who expect to have 
there are certain people you expect to have in your life always. For me, that was you, Sandra. I will miss you so much. All our Chinese food treats at Fang Fang, red wine at Sheraton. Kampala will never be the same without you. I didn't have to explain to my, myself to you. You could finish each other sentence. And it's so cruel that I cannot be with you on your final journey. I will always miss you. I will make sure our children who still haven't met will be friends. I'm so proud of you, Sandra. Until we meet again, rest in peace and power. Love you always, Barbara. Thank you. Those are words from Barbara, her friend. And they reflect the words of lots of Sandra's friends. Um, there was a tribute yesterday uh, online where many people spoke. I think we had about 400 people viewing in. A few people were selected to speak. And those words felt us uh, as family and friends with lots of warmth. Sandra is gone, but she'll never be forgotten. Thank you. He's got my book. Just to remind you, have a few bottles of water at that table. I, 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 didn't, I didn't think this day will come this soon, but here we are. I would like, I would like to thank you all for coming in this difficult moment of the pandemic. It is very courageous of you. It was very touching to see you here because it's not easy to make it for such a function. What do I know about Sandra? I first met Sandra in Budo. She came in S5. She looked way out of my league. Beautiful. And eventually I realized she was approachable. Very kind person. Sandra, through the years, made life better for everyone she interacted with. She was very kind. Sometimes she helped people you didn't even expect. A lot of people, this is manifested by, I mean, when she passed, I cannot imagine how many people that I didn't even expect contacted me and they, they revealed how much love she had, she had showed them. And yet, all this she would do it without expecting anything back. That was the Sandra I knew. She was, wherever she traveled, she brought gifts for anybody, for everybody. Very generous. Courtesy she had, even when she was not up to it. 
temper, but most times for the right reasons. Sense of humor, and even when sometimes things were bleak. Sandra was a very strong, spirited lady. I have heartfelt gratitude for Sandra's parents for raising such an exceptional human being in her. This could be evidenced by over the 400 people that I attended a Zoom yesterday. She, I didn't, I mean, it was overwhelming. She had an exceptional and extraordinary character. Loving mother to our two children, highly gifted. I pledge to look after them, just like she would have liked. In technical terms, they call it formatting. When Sandra and I got married, we started traveling far and wide. We were still very active. Sandra's parents, Mr. Mr. Luanga and Mrs. Luanga formatted, they formatted our children. They, they put values in our children that I can see up to now. I'm very, very grateful for that. It is something that is coming from my sincere heart. And again, I'll re-emphasize, I pledge whatever I can in my powers to continue this journey. Because these kids, as, as the pastor said, She's not really gone. She's just moved to another, yeah, another. I mean, I, I was thinking about it. Someone told me something. Just imagine you're a child in the womb, and you're floating around, eating the best food, salamis and what, and then all of a sudden you're born. And then you start, you cry, right? You, you can't understand. You, you get shocked. Where, where have I gone? Then you, you grow, you eat, you, dip, you build houses, and then you're gone again into another. I think she's, she's just somewhere, probably watching us. So the only pledge again I'll do for her is to give those kids a chance to achieve their greatest potential. Josiah and Kayla. Special recognition to Case Clinic doctors, the health fraternity, I think they did whatever was possible in this country. Special recognition to Mr. Amos Nzei. Of course, the details are ours. I mean, we've had our challenges. Life is like that. Regrets I've had some, but I've had a lot of more interesting memories too. When I got to know Sandra was in case clinic, I was probing, only to find, I mean, everybody knows the cost of COVID now. It's completely out of the roof. An ordinary Ugandan cannot afford it. But I was comforted by the fact the bills were being taken care of by Sandra's parents. I was very optimistic she was going to make it. On Sunday morning, when I received that call, Monday morning, sorry, it was a call from a number I didn't even recognize. It was from Case Clinic. 
I assumed when the person on the other side said this is case clinic, I thought, okay, because I knew she was out of ICU, and I thought Sandra wanted to talk to me. So I said, okay, what is it? Can I, is it IC, is it David Mpanga? Semambia, yes, it is. I'm from case clinic, come to ICU. I said, what? I thought they were calling the wrong number when they mentioned ICU. So I said, what is it? Okay, long story short, they dropped the bomb. I just couldn't believe it. I had a car, I had to drive, I had an errand to take in town. I, I, I don't know how I drove that car, but I didn't make an accident. I just, I was a little bit confused, but it was what it was. And then I asked God, but why? Again, I think the pastor talked about it. Just when I think we are about to take off and, 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 and prove to the, to the parents that, and to everybody that we can, and then she's gone. I just couldn't believe it. But anyway, I thank you very much for that help you gave us. I have a friend here who knows me very well. I would like to recognize Dr. Henry Katamba. In all this, he knows me way back. He knows who I am. He was my conduit of communication in many of these things. And Henry, thank you very much for being who you are. The future will tell. Thanks, very special thanks to some Sandra's siblings, my siblings, my mother. Sandra and my mother were friends, close, to such an extent that sometimes I would get upset that they're talking about personal matters between me and Sandra. But thank you very much, Mommy, for being there. If I talked about Sandra, we would miss your curfew, for sure. Very, very lovely person. I don't know. I have faith. She's my angel now up there, I think. We sh we'll continue this journey. Bye, my hoti. I'll miss you a lot. Till. <laughs> oh God, oh God. <sighs> That's it, I can't continue. Okay. That was David. We have uh Some more tributes. We have some message from Kirabo, which is going to be delivered by Dr. Dr. Henry. Then after that, we shall have another message from uh, Alice Rwanga, which will be delivered by Mr. Henry Katamba. Can we first have uh, uh, Dr. Henry deliver Kirabo's message? I understand it's an audio.
Yes, we're delivering it. Okay. I am Dr. Henry Katamba, a cousin to Sandra. Volume. Okay. I've been given permission to lower my mask. <laughs> yes. um, Dr. Henry Katamba, a cousin to uh, Sandra uh, Luanga, and I'm going to read the message from the sisters of uh, Sandra Luanga, who are brought up as one big family. And uh, we have a lot of fond memories um, as a family. So when I pause, please understand. So this is a message from Alice Nakato Ruanga Mutana, currently in Dubai, the United uh, Arab Emirates. Sandra, these are Howards, was two years older than me, and I was shocked and saddened by the news of the death of my sister. It feels like a bad dream. She was a devout Christian. And although I know that she is with, in a better place, selfishly, I wish she was still here. The special memories of my sister will always make me smile. If only I could have her back for just one day more to sit and talk like we used to, or at least to say a proper goodbye. Sandra was a go-getter. She believed anything was possible, and she always went after what she wanted. Even when she was just in the nick of time, everything always worked out. I envied how she got to the whole thing at the last minute and still succeeded. Where I would have failed dismally without, with, without uh, weeks of planning. I will miss her smile and her laugh, her jokes, her fun loving and outgoing spirit. I will miss having an older sister who always made family celebrations fun and she was life of the party. I will miss her witty one-liners and her business acumen. She was born to thrive. I will miss the Bible verses and Christian songs that she shared and the Christian leaders that she sought out and brought out to our home to pray for us. I will miss her driving, swimming, dancing skills. Like the leader she was, she always showed us how it's done. I will miss the way she doted on her children. She gave them the best she could. My two children, Chirabo, who is 18, and Mahoro, who is 12, by the way, Mahoro is my best friend, will miss their fun, Auntie, Auntie Candy, that's what they called her, who made them laugh with her funny jokes, who took care of them, when I was abroad, who always brought them lovely party dresses and took them on the most amazing holidays. Rest in peace, my dear sister, till we meet again. I love you always. And that is from Alice uh, Nakato Luanga Mutana. There is an audio from Chirabo. I think I'll play it out. How do I do this? Okay, I think I can do this with my mask on, right? Okay. This is a message from Sandra's younger sister, 
Chirapo Luanga Mwanguzi Mugalu. You might wonder why a message from one of Sandra's sisters appears at this point in the order of service amongst the friends. Our darling sister Sandra passed away what feels like only hours ago. I don't think any of my sisters would question me when I say we're probably not quite ready to say au revoir just yet. Since we received the news, I have barely stopped. There has been a lot to do under challenging circumstances and miles apart to give our sister a send-off that is even an iota of what we believe she deserves. So it is only after what one might consider are the essentials that time has come to sit down and think about how we do this. And at the end of the day, not only was Sandra our sibling, she was very much our friend. Last night, we were blessed as we got to hear about Sandra through the hearts and voices of her friends from Budo and Gayaza. We thank I, I you, her up. friends, for sharing your love, stories, and experiences of having been yeah. touched by Sandra. One of Sandra's friends spoke I about how open again. Sandra was, okay. how Sandra interacted freely and openly we don't have with a everyone microphone. and was always just Sandra. Uh. The stories of Sandra as God This is a message from in. Sandra's younger sister, Chirabo Luanga Mwanguzi Mugalu. You might wonder why a message from one of Sandra's sisters appears at this point in the order of service amongst the friends. Our darling sister Sandra passed away what feels like only hours ago. I don't think any of my sisters would question me when I say we're probably not quite ready to say au revoir just yet. Since we received the news, I have barely stopped. There has been a lot to do under challenging circumstances and miles apart to give our sister a send-off that is even an iota of what we believe she deserves. So it is only after what one might consider are the essentials that time has come to sit down and think about how we do this. And at the end of the day, not only was Sandra our sibling, she was very much our friend. Last night, we were blessed as we got to hear about Sandra through the hearts and voices of her friends from Budo and Gayaza. We thank you, her friends, for sharing your love, stories and experiences of having been touched by Sandra. One of Sandra's friends spoke about how open Sandra was how Sandra interacted freely and openly with everyone and was always just Sandra. The stories of Sandra as God-fearing, as a mother who loves her children immensely, as cheeky and fun, as helpful and generous, as kind and gentle, as God's influencer and gatekeeper. That is the Sandra we know and love. Sandra was so open and giving, and all those around her have been blessed as we have been. Thank you so much, Sandra. Our family has been a bit nomadic over the years. In my lifetime, moving from England to Nairobi 1, then Nairobi 2, then Kansanga 1 to Kansanga 2, then Kansanga 3, and Kalolo, and so forth. You get my drift. And every time we moved to a new house, there would be the reshuffling of who got which room or shared with whom. It must have been in about 1994-95 when we lived in Kansanga 2 that I finally got to share a room with Sandra. I couldn't have been more excited about getting to sleep with my amazing older sister. She was so cool and I couldn't believe my luck. And it was during that time, as roommates, that I began to see Sandra less as part of the crew of three older sisters who were just as likely to tease me, scold me, or threaten me as to suddenly shower me with love or stand up for me. 
and I actually got to know Sandra better, one on one. She was lovely. She was also a lazy lion, often sneaking opportunities for a quick nap or staying in bed beyond mummy's diktats to have breakfast and to get helping around the house at a certain time. We often called her Sleeping Beauty. And Sandra was full of words of wisdom, always imparting advice about life and the ways of the world. Eventually, she was working in Kosovo with the UN and I was at university. One day, I received a card in the post from Sandra. And in it, she told me how she loved me, how special I am, and to reach for the stars, and to stay far, far away from men. That was Sandra through and through, thinking of you from miles away, cheering you on, and warning you about the perils ahead. Sandra has always been a faith, and in recent years, her faith and investment in her relationship with God had grown more noticeable and fervent. Through endless encouragement, badgering, and inviting us to meet spiritual leaders, Sandra has left our family in no doubt that God lives, God loves us, and that our love and commitment to him must be absolute and above all. We must be his disciples. We must read our Bibles and pray. And as she did, we must prepare to come to her soon. It was my birthday on 29th May, days before Sandra was admitted to hospital. Over the last few months, Sandra had been sharing more and more with me about her life, her dreams and her aspirations. And now in this beautiful video message, she listed everything she felt I am great at and she blessed me and my family, my cheerleader to the very end. Kayla, Josie, you two know just how much I love you. I will always be your cheerleader. Okay, um, I'm normally the silent one. I find it easier to do assignments and uh, I don't like the limelight. Uh, but I have been put in a tricky situation where I have to say something. And um, there are many things that come to my mind, especially when I'm alone thinking about Sandra. And I'll only talk about specific events that can describe how I feel right now. Uh, I remember the time when Sandra came to King's College. I am the person who used to tease all my friends who would uh, take interest in a girl. I would tease them senseless behind the scenes. And now here was my sister who had come. And uh, I think Ndidi is the first one who told me, by the way, Sandra is coming to King's College. I asked her what happened in Gayaza, why doesn't she stay there? You know, and uh, said, no, no, no. She's coming to join you. And please make her comfortable when she comes. Now, she became the buzzword uh, at King's College. And uh, I realized I was going to move into the limelight. I hid behind the scenes. And very few people came to know. Actually, David came to know about it a little later. And he was like, you didn't tell me that is your sister. I was like, hey, keep quiet. But she was someone who always wanted to help. Even at King's College, she looked for me. We talked. And she introduced me to some of her friends. And well, uh, she started getting me out of my shell. Along the way, I came to know David is settling down with her. I was very, very happy. And she became a very good friend to Sheila, my wife. Uh, Kayla and, uh, and Josie are very, very close to my children. When they got to the news, they all kept quiet. Up to now, we are still teasing to find out 
what is running in their minds, and I'm very sure they will open up with time. She's, she was a very embracing person. Anywhere where she found me, we started our conversation where the last one ended, whether it's a month or two or, you know, and that tells me that she was a very detailed person. And uh, when she went out of her way, she did it genuinely. And uh, like David said, without expecting much uh, from the other side. There are very many lessons that I pick from her life. She's a person who was committed on everything uh, that she carried out. She had a position. If you had anything with her, please, you had to present your issue before she makes that position. When she has taken the position, it would be very hard uh, for you to change it. And for me, that is what I will keep. I pray that uh, we shall be able to handle the situation, especially in bringing up our children and also holding up the memory uh, that, that we have of her. Thank you very much. Rest in peace, my sister. Thank you. Dr. Henry. Now, uh, the weather doesn't seem too good, so I think we need to speed up. Most of you must be wondering what happened to Sandra. So I want to invite uh, Diana Kunda to come and give us a brief of her healthcare journey. Good afternoon once again. My name is uh, Diana Nkunda. I'm a pharmacist by profession. I think here in Uganda they call us doctors or in the East African region. We take that title. <laughs> so if you like, Dr. Diana Nkunda. Um, yeah, Sandra was a friend as well as a sister-in-law. Sandra fell ill about the 1st of June. I think that's when I got a, mess, a phone call from Auntie when COVID had hit Auntie Florence's house. There was another person who started with the symptoms. Auntie was busy going in and out of hospital for about three days, getting that person out of danger. And in the process, they actually forgot about themselves, Auntie Butter and Sandra. On the third day, at about 11 at night, they decided to go back after they dropped off the patient at home to get a COVID test done. And the results came out positive. And immediately, treatment was started on Auntie Florence and Sandra. And I think a few days later, the children also manifested symptoms and treatment was started as well. Uh, they fared quite well. About the 3rd of June, that was uh, Mother's Day, I got a phone call from Auntie in the afternoon saying, I've got Sandra here with me and she's nauseous. And she says she feels it's near the chest. I was sat somewhere, I thought through the information quickly. And I told auntie, you help tell her to provoke herself to vomit. Ah, then we hung up. After two minutes, I rang auntie back and I said, you have the pulse oximeter on you? What is the reading? And I think the reading was 80. Then I told her, auntie, the nausea is a sign of hypoxia. I could tell auntie was in, in an ambulance. She was a little panicked. I didn't want to panic as well. I told auntie, you drive and check into the nearest hospital, Sandra needs oxygen. So they drove from the Ntinda side and their first stop was UMC Bukoto. 
Sandra was checked into hospital and there was a bed and there was oxygen to be available to her. Auntie Butter handed her over to the hospital staff and went home. And she sent me a message to confirm that I've checked her in here. Uh, that was in the evening of the 3rd of June. Sorry. In the evening of the 3rd of June, Sandra slept in that hospital that day, UMC Bukoto. On the Friday afternoon, I passed by Auntie and I found Auntie was in the process of trying to get Sandra moved from that facility to a facility that had a bit more robust services on board because UMC was in overflow. So we made a few phone calls around. There was barely a hospital that had a bed, op a bed available. Uh, I think I quickly rang a friend who was a hospital in Lueza to reserve a bed. She said yes, she kept it for us. But we're still struggling with the distance. Anyway, we quickly set off. I set off from auntie's home with Sheila Katamba. Sheila was wise enough to quickly organize an ambulance for us, a private ambulance which went to UMC and waited there as we then went through the process of trying to evacuate Sandra from that hospital to the next hospital. It took us a little bit of time. Eventually, maybe four hours later, we, I successfully delivered. I drove behind the ambulance. Sandra was in that ambulance and we had managed to get a bed at Case Hospital, which we thank God for. And Sandra was checked in that night at about nine o'clock. She was admitted in. Of course, they didn't know if she was COVID positive or negative. She probably was still positive, so straight to the isolation ward. And immediately, her oxygen demands were catered for, and she was settled in there. Um, she was very picky about some things, even up to the last days when we could still talk to her when she wanted it this way. So she said to me, she sent me a message saying, I want to, no, I think the doctors came out after settling her, said, Diana, she's fine, but um, she wants her own pulse oximeter here. Said, no problem. I sent her a message, hi, Sandra, I'm leaving. I'm going to get you a pulse oximeter. This was about midnight. I thought who could have a pulse oximeter quickly. I knew her cousin Julie had a pulse oximeter because she'd bought one for her house to keep at home just in case. Julie picked up my phone at midnight. I drove out there, picked up pulse oximeter, chatted for a few minutes, and returned to hospital with the pulse oximeter. And in the process, Sandra would say, she was still talking. She sent me messages, Diana, where are you? Please come. Anyway, came back, handed over the pulse oximeter, and that night ended. At about two o'clock, I made my way home, knowing Sandra was settled in. The next day, I needed to follow up. What, is, uh, what are the next steps of care? I rang Dr. Amate from Case Hospital at about four o'clock, and she was kind enough to give me an update. It's not normal for them to give uh, an update on the phone, but um, having rung in the capacity of a healthcare worker and a relative and the one who checked her in, they agreed to give me an update. They took me through everything and they told me what they were considering next. They mentioned to me that she was highly oxygen dependent. The demands for her oxygen were very high and they thought the one source of oxygen through the nebulizer wasn't going to be enough. So they're going to consider high pressure oxygen, which is two sources through the nasal prong and this nebulizer. I said, thank you very much. Um, we hung up. I gave Auntie Butter an update. And later on that night, I just felt a need to go into hospital. I needed to understand how Sandra was and to be able to relate to that scenario while I'm at a distance, coordinating what support we could give her. The staff at her case were kind enough to allow me into the COVID ward, observing all SOPs. I was dressed up like I was going to the moon ready to get in. I sat in there with Sandra. I could see they were doing their best. They'd made her comfortable. They'd organized the two sources of oxygen coming through at high pressure. 
And I spent about three hours in there, maybe a bit more. She was able to communicate with me because talking was a bit tedious for her. So we quickly, we saw tissues in the room. I had a pen. So I'd write a message for her, she would write back to me and tell me what she needs. And then I made sure her phone was charged, left a power bank in there. So she was able to communicate with us even when we were away from this room. Um, a particular incident that night, which gives me so much peace today. Um, Sandra was resting a bit. And then suddenly her phone was charging and the doctors were saying, oh, if you could keep the phone away from her, because it works her up a bit when she's busy with this. They really wanted her to settle. Out of the blue, Sandra woke up and said, Diana, can I have my phone? I told her, oh, Sandra, it's still charging. She said, Diana, can I have my phone? <laughs> anyway, I obliged. I got the phone and I handed it to her. And Sandra quickly got into her phone, played worship music, put it on her ear and slept off. I thanked God I'd given her her phone. <laughs> so she slept peacefully for about three hours and then woke up later. When she woke up, she asked for a hot drink because the oxygen comes in at a very, very cold temperatures. She would keep calling me and saying, Diana, you see, it's cold here. Touch me, it's cold. Anyway, quickly, this was about maybe morning, four o'clock, I ring Ivan, my husband, say, please prepare dawa tea and bring it to the hospital. That she came in at five. I left when she was drinking that tea. But that scenario in there was, helped me to be able to relate to whatever her other comments she sends to us and how we can support her. And in the process, I befriended a nurse called Dick, who was our angel for the two, 17 days that Sandra was in hospital. He kept in touch with us. Every evening in the night, I would send him a message. He would reply and say, Sandra is okay. They're going to do this to her. And he's not here today. He, he had wanted to come, but the travel arrangements didn't allow us because he also got attached to Sandra, apart from the medical responsibility. Uh, we're grateful to Dick. The doctors at Case, being a healthcare worker and a professional, and going in and out of that hospital every day, First of all, I appreciate, I appreciate them for the 24-hour care they gave Sandra, but they were courteous enough to be accommodating of us who kept on asking, what's the update, what's the update? And they would give us an update. On uh, Friday the 12th or the 11th, in the morning I was there with Juliana and they told us to wait for a bit. The doctor asked for a family meeting. He sat down with us and he gave us a good update. We were a bit anxious when they said family meeting because for me I'd been walking in and out. I'd never been told about a family meeting. And that's probably why they'd never called one because I used to get this update off them maybe every four hours. Anyway, so Case was courteous enough to constantly keep us updated on our patient, which helped us as carers and family to feel a bit better and to manage all our anxieties. Sandra eventually tested COVID negative, I think Monday last week, and they moved her from the COVID ward to the normal ICU unit. And on this unit now, even the non-healthcare staff would get a chance to visit her. Her younger sister Esther flew in from Nairobi when I was, I had a work obligation, so I left Uganda on Sunday the 13th. Esther arrived the night before, and on that morning before I went to the airport, I was able to hand over to Esther, give her all the contacts, and Esther was allowed to go in and see Sandra. Um, and as the week progressed, it seemed like we were doing well. We were convinced all the updates were taking us towards victory. On Saturday, last week, Sandra had, she'd been on, lying on her back position because there's all these gadgets around her. But it was wise for them to put her on her stomach because the mucus tends to sit at the back of the lungs. So they wanted her to lay on her stomach and they did a bit of uh, physio chest massages too 
drain this mucus up. They successfully put her on her stomach. It is a bit of a delicate thing to do because they have to make sure all these systems remain in place. And it was a success, tick. She was stable. Saturday, Sunday was good. Um, Sandra's cousin Anita was popping in. She would give us an update that all to do with this, this procedure is called proning is fine. She's okay. Sunday night, we all went to bed knowing we're moving forward. At seven o'clock in the morning, I woke up. I was getting ready to fly back to Uganda. And I found a text message from Dick the nurse that said Sandra is dead. And I was a bit taken aback. I was shocked because I knew we were progressing. Uh, my first instincts were, okay, I rang Esther Luanga on WhatsApp. She didn't pick, rang her directly. She called me back after. And I rang Juliana and I threw the news at her and I hung up. And then we had to find a way to wisely tell Auntie Florence. So my next phone call was to Henry, who lives not far from Auntie. Told Henry, get ready, just go and sit at Auntie's and deliver the news. And he successfully did that. But I had so many questions running through my mind. Of course, as a healthcare worker, you're thinking, what did we not do? What could we have done? Um, I flew back to Uganda that afternoon, was delayed a little bit about at the airport with the COVID tests on return. And entering into Kampala, I asked my husband to take me to Case Hospital. I think for me, I was looking for a sense of closure on the matter. I went to the third floor where the intensive care unit is, and I asked one of the doctors to give us a small summary of what could have led to uh, the last events in Sandra's life. They were kind enough once again. I waited for a bit. The ICU doctor came out and gave me a small brief. Uh, her words were that they think that as they were turning her on her back, no, from her back to the stomach, that was on Saturday, then she stabilized, she was fine. Now on the Monday morning, early in the morning, they usually start their procedures maybe five o'clock, six, five. They were turning her back onto her back because it is the safer position with all these gadgets around her. So this proning was supposed to last 48 hours, 48 hours were done, she had to be put on her back. As they were turning her onto her back, she got a cardiac arrest. They were also surprised by this because their Sandra was actually progressing forward. And their explanation is that there must have been a blood clot which was moving all this time. And at that very point when the cardiac arrest happened, it embedded somewhere and what we call in medicine a pulmonary embolism, it logged in and that was the cause of Sandra's death. They had tried to keep her on a high dose of anticoagulants because she was at risk of uh, these blood clots because of being in a sedentary position. But the disease itself constantly triggers the blood clots to form. So it was just the body being able to strike a balance between the clots that are being formed being decoagulated and preventing those that could be forming from forming. Sandra was already COVID negative, but there was probably a large number of these blood clots already running around the small vessels somewhere, and one of them made its way to the wrong place, and that is how Sandra died. We tried our best. There was constant support from family. Food was delivered when she could still eat. Uh, Sometimes she would send me, a, she was a bit worried about this ventilator thing because she was put on a ventilator a week before she died. And I remember she sent me an audio and she could just about speak saying, Diana, when they're going to do this next procedure, please be here. I need you to be here. 
and she was still messaging us, me, Sheila, um, Julie, and I would reply to her and they say, yes, Sandra, I'm going to be there. And I was there that morning, but I didn't get to see her before they ventilated her. I was allowed in later with Juliana on the Saturday and we saw her with the ventilator on and she was fighting on. So we tried, the healthcare workers tried, Kes did their best. Sandra's oxygen demands were one cylinder every three hours. They never ran short of that oxygen, they were on top of their game. And I take this opportunity to appreciate all the healthcare workers who gained us those two weeks with Sandra from the time she went into hospital. Um, yes, and all the family support we got, we're grateful. Sandra was loved. Sandra was not only my sister-in-law, she was my friend. I get quite busy with work sometimes, but I will always get the odd message from Sandra, hey babes, you're lost. You know, she always wanted to keep in touch. Loving an amazing young lady. Kayla and Josie are very close to my children and they know they're always happy and welcome in my house and you'll always be Kayla and Josie. Uh, Sandra, we can keep talking about Sandra all day and all night. Sandra is Sandra, she can't be replaced, but her memories will live in our hearts. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you, Diana, for that uh, medical brief. I was actually wondering myself, because the messages I was getting from David was like uh, Sandra was out of the woods. So when the information came through that she had passed on, I was very shocked because I thought she, had, she, she was well on the way to recovery. But anyway, uh, we are Christians, and we believe uh, God, if it's God's plan, we, 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 we trust and believe that Sandra is with the Lord. until we meet her someday. Now, we, we, we continue with our program. I'll uh, request, uh, we need a tribute from uh, Mrs. Uh, Florence Luanga, mother, the mother to Sandra. You can do it from there, madam. Thank you. Yes, you can. Yes, uh, so I, uh, um, I still feel dizzy. Um, there are so many issues when you have recovered from COVID. Uh, but uh, after two weeks, I tested. I'm COVID free. Thank God. But I want to say something about COVID. Because we have experienced it in my house, six people. I don't know whether Sandra got it first, but we had a guest from the village who rang and said, Mama, we have a Baganda connection through this young man. The grandfather of Henry Katamba brought me up. I was an orphan. I grew up in Henry Katamba's grandfather's home. So that is the connection. So when she requested to come, at that time, COVID had got quiet. They were not publicizing it much. So I said, come. So she traveled from Masaka to my house. She was with me for two weeks. On the 14th day, she started complaining about the chest. She was saying, 
and the first day she said chinuma. Immediately I took her to the hospital. I have always seen doctors tap the chest with two fingers and tapping. And I had always wondered, what, what are they? I, I never hear anything. What are they looking for? When they tapped the girl's chest, it was like a big drum, like beating a big drum. So immediately they put her on medication through the veins, morning and evening. Because I was busy with her, and because we did not have a worker at home, I did not think, for three days, I did not think I might have COVID. I just kept on looking after her, cooking, serving. On the third day, when I went back home at 11 in the night, and I fed her and put her to bed, God spoke to me and said, Florence, go back. Go back and they check you for COVID. I drove at 11.30 and remember curfew time. And they checked me and I had COVID. And I rang Sandra, she came at midnight and they checked her and she had COVID. So we all, the, 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 the girl followed like three, four days after and the boy like four, five days after. So all of us were on treatment. And I can tell you, COVID is not a cheap disease. Because to do PCR, that's the more precise test. Is a hundred, when we started, it was 150. Now it's 250 or 300. And we have tested at the beginning and we had to test whether we were negative. And the treatment alone, the cheapest option, is like 400,000. So Ugandans are going to die. How many people can afford that? I thank God that the funds were available and the six people were checked, treated, rechecked, and we are all OK. So in other words, I'm comforting those around me, unless I got it the, the last three days, that I'm COVID free. <laughs> Now, I'll say just a little about uh, Sandra. Uh, most of her attributes uh, have, been, have been said, but I'll um, just point out a, f a few areas where uh, it will help you understand who Sandra was. And I thank God for Sandra's life, because Sandra was a good person she had a heart of God. She was an angel on this earth. When she would travel abroad, she would buy for everybody in the home, for the housemaid, for the chamber man, for the gatekeeper, for the gatekeeper's child, everybody would benefit from Sandra's travel. This, that is an unusual quality. Most of us will maybe buy for our family, but the workers, you, you, you might not think about them. For her, every human being was equal. The love she, show, she showered on us with the same, the big, that big hug, which David, I remember, pointed out, which drew him to her. <laughs> that big hug would go even to the maids and the chamberman, to everybody. When drivers come to our home and they stay in the car, Sandra will serve them tea, not in a cup, on a tray, a cup, and a teapot. And when I get out and I say, but Sandra, you can just give him a cup, he, he'll never, she'll never listen. And Mrs. Karugaba's driver is one of those who has always benefited. When drivers are at home, everybody will eat. Everybody will be given juice. She can even empty a whole jug on the drivers. That is the girl we are talking about. Sandra was well brought up. This is reflected 
in the respect she gave Mrs. Impanga. And Mrs. Impanga can testify to this. Their marriage had problems, they had challenges. But Sandra, despite all the challenges, and you know mothers of sons always support their sons, regardless of the challenges. Yes, they support their sons 100%. The son never does anything wrong in the eyes of the mother. But still, but still, she would respect Mrs. Impanga. She would respect all those sisters. And they can testify. If it was me, for me, I'm Chiga. <laughs> If it was me, I would not be even stepping anywhere near them or even greeting them. But up to the end, my child respected you people. I would like to thank a few people. Because I was sick, I did not have time to go and check on Sandra. All those 16 days, she was in hospital. I did not step there even one day. But Diana, who is a pharmacist, and on the COVID uh, task force of the nation, sacrificed time to be with Sandra. She would go talk to the doctors, and she would come back and report to me what is going on in the hospital. Sheila Katamba, who is like uh, my daughter-in-law, but uh, she's also related to me through her mother, was working hand in hand with, uh, tell me, with what? <laughs> you know this disease affects your memory. <laughs> it does affect your memory. So Diana had escaped my, my mind. <laughs> it does affect your memory. And uh, I would like to thank my daughter Esther. Once she knew that Diana is flying out for one week, she flew in and she was here for five days. She has a medical background, but she's not a doctor. But do uh, in the hospital, they were referring to Diana as Dr. Diana. <laughs> so I briefed test and told her, you tell them you are a doctor from Nairobi. <laughs> <laughs> so with that, they gave her respect. They would give her information. She would go to that hospital like four times a day to be with her sister. And she told me that when I would hold Sandra's hand and talk to her, I would see the oxygen levels go up. So she said, you know this being alone does not give her hope. And that is for the doctor. I know you have two doctors there. The being alone does affect these patients. Because when she would hold her seat with her, she would see the oxygen levels go up. I would like to thank Ivan Nkunda, who is my nephew and the husband of Diana for allowing Diana to work so hard. Diana sometimes would leave the hospital at midnight. And poor Nkunda would be maybe in bed waiting. So I, I thank you, Nkunda, for, for your patience. <laughs> I thank uh, the Mpanga family for putting up this. And I thank everybody who has been able to come here because it is a risk. Each one of you here is taking a risk. So we appreciate you giving us time to be with us. Uh, Sandra was my friend. She showered me with gifts, not only me, the children, the sisters, the workers, everybody. everybody. She, she had expensive tests. She would buy the most expensive handbags, perfumes, uh, sunglasses, and she introduced me to class. 
Although I have a bit of money, but I did not know class. And, and she did introdu introduce me to that. Uh, I know Sandra is in heaven. Sandra had a good relationship with God beyond, beyond belief. Because I would say, but how can you pray hours and hours and hours? How come I pray for 20 minutes and God answers my prayers? But for her, she would praise, she would, she would uh, uh, praise and pray for hours. Uh, Sandra invested a lot in the work of God. She supported so many pastors, she supported so many churches, and she believed in giving 10%, regardless of how much it is. There's a time she sold a piece of land and she was taking 18 million KPC. I said, what? Why can't you give them three? She said that the 10% is 18 million and she gave it. That is the Sandra we are talking about. So she has invested in heaven. I have no worries. Since they told me that Sandra has passed, I have not shed a tear. And God has given me strength even to talk here. I'm not a good public speaker, but I have been able to say something about my beautiful daughter, Sandra. Sandra, rest in peace. I know you are in heaven. And I request the Mpangas, I know the Baganda with their Bija. You cannot just visit that place there where they are taking Sandra. You cannot just come and visit. But I request the Mpangas, always when I call and I say, I want to go and see my child to allow me to come and see my baby. I would have taken her back where I come from. We have big bijas, maybe a quarter an acre or more. Just with graves, we have like 50 graves there. I would have taken her there, but because of Sandra's babies, I said, let them rest Sandra here so that her children can always see her. And I know Josie will be there. Kayla might be taken somewhere else, but Josie will be put there. And unless he chooses otherwise. Uh, David, we have had, had issues with you, but you know that I love you. And recently I rang you and I told you I love you. And you laughed. <laughs> because we have, I have been. <laughs> and uh, David, you have beautiful, beautiful children. I'm not talking about this beauty. Inside, inside beauty. When Josie was with you, she would, he would send a message and say, Jaja girl, are you shouting at Regina? Regina is the housekeeper. Are you shouting at Regina? Please don't shout too much. <laughs> <laughs> Jaja girl, have you started shouting at Deborah? Deborah, I pay her school fees for her. She's at Jambogo. Are you shouting at? De have you started? <laughs> So they, they, they have love for the workers, and I think they feel when I shout too much. And indeed, I was shouting. <laughs> because I was stressed, I was looking after six people. We did not have a house girl. I was cooking, serving, taking three groups of people to the hospital three times a day, at 7, at 2.30, and at 9.30 in the night every day for seven days. Then on the seventh day, Sandra has to be admitted to another. I was in the ambulance with Sandra. Sandra was dying on me. I deposited her at, at a Victoria Hospital. The new wing was full. They put her in a place where there were cobwebs, where the, where the floor was dirty where the toilet had never seen a toilet brush. We have a small house, but we are very clean, very, very clean. So when Sandra woke up 
in that environment, she said, hey, mommy has brought me here to kill me. She went into a depression immediately. That's when I rang Sheila and Diana to go and look at the place, see how it is, and they found it dirty. They said Sandra cannot stay here, and we changed her to another place the next day. Thank you very much. I appreciate what you have done here. I promise to reduce on my sh shouting and screaming. <laughs> but I hope you understand it's because of COVID. COVID had gone here. There's a night I did not sleep. I sent message everybody I had ever wanted to quarrel with that night. <laughs> Everybody, including Mami Mpanga David, <laughs> including my doctor that night, the whole night up to 5.30, I was quarreling, quarreling with people. That is the disease. And just one word of caution. This COVID comes not even as flu. You don't get flu. That business in, that you, you won't get, uh, uh, the smell, test buds will go, the, the what, what else? The test, the smell, the headache, the temperature, there was nothing like that. I was not sick. For me, I never even laid down one day. I did not lie down one day that I was sick. But the test proved positive. So you can have it and walk with it, and if, the longer you take, the lower that COVID will go down into your lungs. The sooner you go to the hospital, the easier and the faster the recovery period. So you might find that maybe Sandra, maybe had it even before that girl, I don't know. I don't know. Because for her, it progressed. I mean, instead of getting better, she got worse. But how do you know you have COVID? How does one know? Yeah, it will be in you four days, five days, it goes down. So the doctors, Dr. Henry Katamba, you have to do something. People are going to die, and they're going to die in numbers. Because there's no way of detecting if there's no temperature, you still have your smell, you still have your test buds are working. How do you know? How do you know that you have it? Do we have to check every week? We go for the PCR test, which is now two, over 250. People are going to die. Thank you for listening to me. It's a humorous, uh, humorous speech. I want to work, make one correction, though. And I think the term is sobriety. The Ampangas are sober. So, how can we stop a Muchiga <laughs> to come and visit? It is not possible. <laughs> it is very dangerous. So, we are very sober. So you are always welcome to come and visit Sandra. Please record it. <laughs> so thank you so much. Uh, my grandmother, mother to my mom, used to, have, used to sing a certain song. Maybe you could join me and we just sing one stand. You might know it. It's in Luganda. She used to say, To kutendereza yesu, yesu oli mwana wandiga, omusae munaziza, tuwebaza omlokozi. Thank you so much. I request our pastor, because what's coming now, what's going next on the program is we shall have a prayer, closing prayer.
from a pastor. Then those who want to go walk down to Sandra's final resting place and lay wreath, please do so. Pastor. <laughs> I'm going to request all of us to stand up, please. I kindly request, and if you have a Bible, please go to the book of Psalms 91. These days we have digital ones. Uh, I'm going to give you a tablet, a, 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 a piece of uh, herbal, herbal medicine, which you can apply every day uh, in your house, in your car, wherever you go, you can apply this tablet. It's from the Bible. It's in Psalms 91. We are going to personalize it. We're going to personalize So you're going to repeat it after me. Uh, if, if, if when we leave this place, we will not only leave um, thankful for the life of Sandra, but also asking, confident that the Lord is protecting us. Hallelujah. Because we can be wearing masks, but these masks, we have seen people dying with their masks on. So we ask the Lord to bring a supernatural mask to protect us. Hallelujah. So Psalms 91, you simply repeat it after me. It says, He that dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Okay, let's go. He that dwells in the secret place of the Most High, after me, shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress. My God, in him I will trust. Surely he shall deliver me from the snare of the fowler and from the noise and pestilence. He shall cover me with his feathers and under his wings I shall trust. His truth shall be my shield and buckler. I shall not be afraid for the terror by night, nor for the arrow that flies by day, nor for the pestilence that walks in darkness, nor for the destruction that wastes at midday. A thousand shall fall at my side, and ten thousand on my right hand but it shall not come near me. Only with my eyes shall I behold and see the reward of the wicked. Because I have met the Lord my refuge and the Most High my habitation, there shall no evil befall me, neither shall any plague come near my dwelling. For he shall give his angels charge over me to keep me in all my ways. They shall bear me up in their hands, lest I dash my foot against a stone. I shall tread upon the lion and adder, the young lion and the dragon. I shall trample under feet. Because I've set my love upon the Lord, therefore he will deliver me. He will set me on high because I have known his name. I shall call upon him and he will answer me. He will be with me in trouble. He will deliver me and honor me. With long life, he will satisfy me and show me his salvation. Hallelujah. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, we embrace the words of Psalms 91 as our protection against the coronavirus, against every circumstance that may, find, um, may, may meet us along the way. We take authority against every powers of darkness, every forces of evil. You say whatever we bind on earth is bound in heaven. Whatever we loose on earth 
is loosed in heaven. As we take our sister to lay, to lay her to rest, Father, we ask of you that every seed shall sown in the helpless people, in the ministers of God, in the people who needed her help, in the people, strangers and people she knew. We pray that you multiply every seed and cause it to become a harvest in the life of her husband and her children and everybody who is dear to her. Father, we ask of you today that you, you protect us as we go back home, as we drive, as we walk, as we go everywhere. Let your presence, let your glory be our rear guard and your righteousness go ahead of us. Surround us with songs of deliverance and cover us with the blood of Jesus. We thank you, my Father, for it is said and it is done. In Jesus' mighty name we prayed. And everybody said, Tukute tendereza, yeah. Yesu, yesu, oli mwana gwandiga. O musa, gunazi, iza tuwe waza. O mulokozi. May the Lord be with you in Jesus' mighty name. And may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all now and forevermore. Amen. God bless you. Over to you. Um, Ladies and gentlemen, the function is uh, really done. Um, for those interested who want to go, Please feel free to go down to Sandra's final resting place with, with me. You lay your wreath on Sandra's uh, grave and you leave at your convenience. You leave at leisure. Please keep your masks on. As we go down, we should social distance and uh, sanitize wherever possible. There are some people down waiting for us. It's right to walk through that uh, opening. There's a path going down to Sandra's resting place. Thank you.
up your name God. you are high and lifted up you are great and greatly to be praised oh I believe that you are here to heal the broken heart oh, we worship you we worship Oh, I lift my voice to sing to you. I gotta have you. I gotta have you, Lord. I gotta have you. I gotta have you, Jesus. I need you, Jesus. I need you, Jesus. I need you, Jesus. Oh, I 
Desperate for you, and I surrender, and I surrender, and I want to know you more. I want to know you more. I surrender. Come on, all over this room. I surrender. I want to know you more. I want to know you more. Say, drench. Drench, mercy, mercy, and grace. Hunger, and hunger. Is anybody thirsty today? Come on, tell them I'm hungry. I'm hunger, and hunger. Arms stretch wide. To his heart, cry out, say, God, I surrender. I Oh, 
You deserve 
Try to take his praise away from him. Say, my hallelujah. Yes, it belongs. When the world try to get your praise, God, I'll tell you that my yes. Come on, somebody needs to really give it to him this morning. Sing it one more time. My hallelujah. All together one last time. My hallelujah. Right there where you stand, go ahead and give it to him. Come on, give him your best praise. Give him your best shout. Give him your best worship. Don't bring 2016 praise into 2017. Give him something new. He requires more of you. Now he needs more of you, more than what you did last year. He needs something new in this new season. Come on, give it to him, church. Give it to him, church. Hallelujah. 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 Bless the name of the Lord. In the name of Jesus, hallelujah. Glory to God. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Uh, whom shall I fear? Of whom shall I be afraid? Uh, tell everybody, you know, I'm going to trust in Jesus. I'm going to trust in Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory, glory. We came to bless the name of Jesus. We came to lift your name high because you are great uh, and greatly to be praised. Uh, glory. Did you come to sing tonight? I said, did you come to sing tonight? Come on, then let's worship right here. Everybody, the Lord is my light. Who shall I fear? Yes, God. Come on, you say, the Lord is my light. Who shall I fear? Yes, God. Come on, sing that again. Say, the Lord is my light. I hear your worshipers. Whom shall I fear? Say, the Lord is my light. Thank you, God. I will wait on you. Hallelujah. I will wait on you, Jesus. I hear you, church. I hear you, church. Say, I will trust in you. That's it. Lift it up. Lift it up. I will trust in you, God. Come on. Let's take it back to the top. Everybody, come on. The Lord is my life. The Lord. Put it in part, y'all. Whom shall I? Yes, God. Everybody say the Lord. Come on, sing it for yourself. Who shall I fear? One more time, one more time. Sing it again. The Lord is my light. Who shall I fear? This time testify to somebody. Tell them. Say, the Lord is my light. Hallelujah. Who shall I fear? Hallelujah. Now this is what we say. I will wait on you, Jesus. Father, we will wait on you. I will wait on you. Lift it up. Say, I will trust in you. I hear you. Let them know it. Let them know it. Say, I will trust in you. Let's take it out right here, y'all. I will remain. Say, I will remain. 
I love that part. Everybody say, I will remain. Yes, I will. Let's take it out right here. Come on. Hallelujah. Now, if you trust him, come on, put your hands on it like this. Come on. All over the house, all over the house. God, we bless your name. God, we honor you. Come on, y'all say, we said, we said. That's it, church. Come on. Do you want Yes, God. Everybody listen up. Do you want We said I hope for you. that I will see the goodness of the Lord. I can't die until I see it. Jesus. I used to be so broken, lost in tears. A heart with no beat. A singer with no song to sing So I know the feeling The silence is deafening But in your pain lies a blessing A sweet and sour victory So keep walking, walking, walking Though it seems so No matter who you are, see there's one thing that I know. When life it can leave you so bitter, 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 but you must believe that it gets better. Listen to me. I know. 
though you're scared, your heart's bleeding. But what are you gonna do now? I think it's time you break free and you better keep walking, 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 though it seems so far. Oh, no, it doesn't really matter who you are. See, that's one thing that I know. Oh, yeah, life tries to leave you so bitter, 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 bitter. You must believe that it gets better, 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 better. It's all right, try your eyes, send a prayer to the sky, I know it's hard to find, but you must believe that it gets better, it's almost out of here, see I was almost gone, I wanted to die, from how I was done wrong, I cried out and Looking for a helping hand, but that's when it happened. Jesus took me and he held me close, gave me love, refilled my heart, helped me grow. I'm better because God made me whole. He's available anytime. Try him out, he'll change your life. See, because I know that if I try to be. You will bitter, bitter, bitter. Oh, but you must believe Jesus will make it better. Jesus will make it better. Oh, I try to leave you so bitter, bitter, bitter. Ah, yeah. God will make you believe it will get better. will make it better. Jesus will make it better. Jesus. 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 I will call upon the Lord who is great to greatly to be praised and so shall I be saved. 